We're going to be talking about the EcoFlow Delta 3, and we're going to talk about the EcoFlow Smart Generator 3000. So we did a lot of different tests. I'm going to run this on a welder. I'm going to use it a vacuum pump, a recovery machine, a 15 amp circular saw, a 1300 watt microwave, pretty much all your normal loads that you would run. Plus we're going to max this thing out and see whether it pukes and dies or whether it can keep on chugging along. So as you may know, HVACR Survival, which is my channel, generally is about heating, air conditioning, refrigeration, and generator repair. So you can imagine how excited I was to pick up one of their gas generators. Well, what's awesome here is it's just not gas only, it's actually dual fuel. This is actually propane or gasoline, one or the other. So if you're in an actual emergency situation where gas stations might be down, but you have your gas grill setting there, you can hook up your propane tank to that and get her running. Plus the propane burns a lot cleaner, a lot less CO. Speaking of CO, the generator actually has a CO detector built right into it. Now obviously they want you to use this outside of the house, outside of the garage. They got a little shed they kind of recommend you build for it. That way if it's raining, it keeps it protected. But what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna talk about the Delta 3, which is the primary reason for this video. But I'm gonna show you what your options are when you have a smart generator. For me, I've been powering my house with gas generators for several years now. The power stations have just now finally become large enough with the production of the Ultra or the Delta Pro 3 or even the original Delta Pro. So now I actually have options of going battery and then also having the generator for a backup. Something to consider with normal generators, they run full bore constantly wasting fuel the whole time, even when your load is small. Now there are generators out there with eco mode on them, the way they'll slow the idle down, which is gonna save you fuel. But my warning for you is make sure that it's an actual inverter generator because when you slow down the generator, you'll actually affect your frequency and most homes have to have 60 Hertz here in the United States. When you slow down a generator, it screws up your frequency. So if you buy one of those cheap ones, you can actually do a lot of damage. And speaking of fuel, depending on how hard you're running it, the gasoline can run up to 3.3 hours. And with a 20 pound propane tank, you can get up to 11 hours under a full load or you can get up to 33 hours if the load is light. So as you can see, you've got flexibility now. Most of the time when you're losing power, it's not a sunshiny day for your solar to work. So for me, the gas generator was a great backup. Solar panels are great, but you usually need quite a few of them to actually charge things quickly unless you got a smaller battery system like this one right here. And speaking of the battery life, the Delta 3 here uses a 1,024 watt hour battery with the latest generation of lithium phosphate that gets you up to a total of 4,000 life cycles. And even at the end of those 4,000 life cycles, you still have only a 20% reduction, leaving you 80% capacity. In other words, you got upwards of over 10 years of runtime out of these. And in the unlikely event that you have a breakdown, EcoFlow backs their products with a five-year warranty. Bouncing back over here to the Delta 3, it is expandable with an extra battery. You can up it to 1,000 extra watt hours, or you can take it up to a total of 5,000 watt hours by adding the Delta Pro 3 battery with an adapter. You can give yourself a total of 5,000 watt hours. So depending on what kind of wattage you need to run your house, your camper, or whatever you're planning on powering, this might be the right size system for you. Another nice thing about it being a smaller system is it charges really quickly. The D3 here can actually charge up in about 56 minutes from zero to 100%, which allows you plenty of time to get back out on the road and not have to worry about spending all day charging. And speaking of charging, you're able to charge this with multiple different inputs. You can use solar, you can use the gas generator, you can use a wall outlet, you can use the 12 volt input through the cigarette lighter adapter, or you can use the 800 watt car adapter that they have available that allows you to charge it straight off your alternator with a DC to DC charging. Now, some of the things that they've done here on the Delta 3 compared to the Delta 2 is they made a lot of improvements on sound. So one of the things they did was they actually moved the fans to the front into the back so that it can pull air through the front, out through the back, and keep the unit cool and quiet. This unit doesn't put out much sound at all. Even under a hard load, it only puts out about 40 some dB. Another thing they did here with the Delta 3 is they actually copied the design of the Delta Pro 3 and they used very similar display here on the front. It's very easy to read your input and output wattage. You can see exactly what your battery life is on the sides, how fast it's charging, lets you know that you have UPS backup, which they improved that too. They also improved the switchover speed of the UPS. Now it does it in as little as 10 milliseconds, which should work for about any kind of computer out there, even under hard gaming conditions. And they even implemented a smart plug so that it can actually tell the server or computer to supposedly shut down. Now, of course, I don't have a server, so there's no way for me to test that, but that's supposedly the integration that they've got built into it. Another big improvement they did, and probably an industry first here, is they increased the USB-C fast charging up to 140 watts 
each plug, not just 140 total, but each plug is 140 watts. And then over here on your USB-A, it actually gives you a total of 36 watts on each plug. Now on the layout here, you can see that they have rotated them left and right, which allows you to get different types of wall plugs on here. So if you have one of those big wall warts, it's gonna make use of the different positions here so that you're able to get as many connections into the front as possible. Now jumping onto the back, you have two 5521 DC plugs. You have the traditional 12 volt accessory plug that you would see in most cars. And up here at the top where you charge it at, it has a slide in shelf, which gets it out of the way that allows you to hook your extra battery here in the front. You have your two solar inputs here on the side and your solar inputs here are rated at 11 to 60 volts input up to 15 amps. And then you have the traditional three pin plug for the AC charging. As you can see, this thing is pretty easy to move around. It only weighs right around about 27 and a half pounds. So most people with just their little finger here can pick it up and take it where they need to go. Which also, once again, having bigger isn't always better. This right here at 1800 watts of continuous power is gonna be able to power anything that you would normally plug into a traditional home outlet. So we did a lot of different tests. I'm gonna run this on a welder. I'm gonna use it a vacuum pump, a recovery machine, a 15 amp circular saw, a 1300 watt microwave, pretty much all your normal loads that you would run. Plus we're gonna max this thing out and see whether it pukes and dies or whether it can keep on chugging along. Now the Delta 3 here does feature the X-Boost technology, which is made more or less for hair dryers and resistive loads that aren't really critical on voltage because what it does, it actually lowers the voltage output, which then lowers your wattage. So you're able to handle loads up to about 2,300 watts. Now the X-Boost mode is not really good for your computers and things like that. So like I said, resistive loads is where you wanna use that the most. Now, if you wanna check either one of these products out, I will have links down in the description down below. So please check those out. Now jumping back over to the generator here, like I was saying, it is propane or unleaded gas, either or. Now you do have a 200 watt gain when you're running gasoline. Now for me, I'm able to bring this into the house and not have to worry about something catching on fire because there's no gasoline inside of it. I went ahead and chose to go with the propane just because it's more convenient. Also another nice thing about their app, which EcoFlow has probably one of the best apps out there. You're able to keep track of your oil, your air filters, spark plugs, valve adjustments, all that is taken care of in the app. So they made this thing so simple. And if this isn't big enough for you, they do have a 4000 series that puts out even more power. And it's also dual fuel. Now, once again, as EcoFlow constantly comes out with new products, now don't confuse it with their first generation generator that is just gasoline only. But if you're not looking for dual fuel and you wanna save a little bit of money, they do have that also available. On one of my last reviews, they wanted to know whether or not we could weld with one of the power stations. So we're gonna go ahead and try out the 120 volt Lincoln. We'll start off at my normal setting, which is about 75%. Let's go ahead and crank it almost all the way up. Take her up to J. Uh-oh. I actually grounded the tip of it out, so that was my fault. Seems to be doing just fine this time. Okay, very good. It did it no problem at all. I just went ahead and turned on X-Boost. I was playing back the video and noticed we were running 2200 watts for quite a while, and this is only rated for 1800. Let's see what happens with the voltage. The voltage will drop a little lower now. The wattage should stay under 1800. We're still maxed out on the welder. I'm not really sure what's going on because I can't see it, but we'll go ahead and zoom in on it. Actually, it's running a lot better now. All right, this is with X-Boost on, running a 15 amp circular saw. The inductive load is gonna be quite handsome for it. What I noticed with this is the voltage sags quite a bit and I think you're losing power. It's allowing you to run the higher load, but it's sacrificing power because you're losing the voltage. No problem there, but let's try it without X-Boost. All right, we have X-Boost turned off. Let's go ahead and start over. We're gonna go ahead and do a microwave here. This is 120 volt. Put a bottle of water in there. Power is on 100%. Let's go one minute. Pulling 1250 watts. Holding dead in there at 120 volts. Okay, for my HVAC people, let's go ahead and do a vacuum pump. 
Say you can't afford or don't want to spend the money on a battery operated one. Well, that is really playing games with the frequency there, ain't it? It must be causing some sort of harmonics. I had to turn on my low pass filter. Without the low pass filter, you can see that the frequency is going all over the place. But once you put the frequency filter on there, it did no problem. As far as voltage, 119 volts, no problem. Pulling only 480 uh, watts, 480 watts. And looks like you could get about a 1.7 uh, hour vacuum. That's not too bad, Beans. This thing is selling right now on sale for $649. And a cordless vacuum is somewhere around $450 to $600, depending on what brand you're buying. Let's say we want to do a recovery and pull a vacuum on our tank. We're running 876 watts. We had a peak out there. Turn off the vacuum pump. Pulling 400, kick back on the vacuum pump. Turn off the recovery machine. You can run them both, there you go. We have a full charge battery here. We're plugging it in first thing in the morning. It is 7.58 and that's our date and time. We'll see where it is at the end of the day. It is full of stuff. All right, it's five o'clock. Just checking to see where our device is at now. We are right at 59%. All right, 10, 14 at night, and we are at 25%. We're pulling 38 watts. Completely dead, turn on output. Got less than 500 kilowatt hours out of it. We had 11 hours and 27 minutes of runtime. We just turned on the power station here for the inside refrigerator. Uh, we just started out at 100% and we've got the watt meter going. So we'll see what we end up coming up with and uh, track it. So according to this, if it was running nonstop, we'd have a total of 5.3 hours out of it at 165 watt draw. Okay, so I got home, it is 611. I didn't look sooner, but uh, completely dead. Luckily is 42, 44 degrees, so it must have not went out too long ago. As far as kilowatts out of it, I got 750 kilowatts, so 750 watts. It looks like we had eight hours and 32 minutes of runtime out of it. Well, let's do some math here. Uh, we'll do the math, uh, do that math right there. Let's throw that up on the screen. All right, it just shut down at 5%, which is where I had it shutting off at, just to help protect the battery some. Our drain down was 863 watt hours. It comes out to about 84%, which is pretty much in line with all the other tests that I've seen. Because the power factor on the refrigerator is different than a resistive load, you're gonna lose some efficiency. So those are some things that you gotta take in consideration. We've been charging now at maximum charge rate of 1500 watts. And as you can see, we're running right in at 39 dB. You can just barely even hear the fan running at all. We're checking out the thermal imaging here of the power station. As you can see, our hottest spot is in the middle area. We bring over the pointer, which is right in the center, and that's picking up about a 100 degree area in the center. The thermal imager is picking up a maximum of about 111, 112, which is right up there on the top there of the handle. Now that's direct radiant heat coming out of the back. So if more accurate temperature, if you went to the center white one there, you're looking right at about 91 degrees. The actual skin temperature down here in the room, if you go to the wall, 65 degrees because we are down in a basement area. Coming around to the back side of the power station, you can see some of our highest temperatures are going to be coming out of the back of the injection point. You can see we're hitting 132. That is looking right into the unit, getting the direct heat pattern from the heat sinks in the inside. If you look at the power cord, it looks good. Nothing's extreme on that. Now we did a 24 hour parasitic test to see what kind of battery drain we get from just running the AC inverter only. So what we've came up with is 3% of battery loss per hour while running just the AC inverter only in standby. Currently we're performing the 12 volt DC drawdown test. We've lost 2% over an eight hour period of time. This is running the USB-C outlets and the rear 12 volt outlet. So if you to estimate it at 24 hours, we would be down to about 92%. The DC drawdown test is much more efficient than what the AC drawdown test is, so it does very well on that. Let's go ahead and start doing some DC testing here on the 12 volt outlet. Seven amps, eight amps, nine, 10 amps. 10 amps, we're draining down to about 10 volts. We're pulling out 100 watts. 
I don't really care for the voltage drop. However, that could be just from the actual plug here. Now, speaking of accessories, they do give you the 1521 plug and they give you the car plug adapter. You can charge two of these at the same time, allowing you to do the maximum charge rate off of the car, which usually is about 8 amps. Now for the next test, we'll go ahead and do the 5521 barrel plug test. These are only rated for actually three amps. We got 12.47 here, 12.461 here. Let's slowly increase. There's three amps what it's rated at. We're holding steady at 12.37. As you can see, we're actually pulling 5.6 amps out of there. Finally starting to drop in voltage. All right, we'll go ahead and test out the USB-A. Uh, unless you've got a device that's actually talking the language that it's talking at, a lot of times you're gonna have an issue with getting it to do it. So what we'll do on the 140 watt is we'll hook up the MacBook Pro and it will pull uh, up to 100 plus watts on that. You can see we're holding right in there at 4.7. 18 didn't like it over that. So let's go ahead and plug in the MacBook. You can hear the computer just kick on. We've already jumped up to 19.9 volts. Pulling 47 watts so far. We may have a limitation here on my plug. So let's go ahead and plug it in directly. All right, it's finally time to get started on the generator. We're gonna go ahead and open it up. They don't come with oil, so you need to add some oil to it. We're gonna hook up the battery. We're gonna put her back together, hook up the propane, plug in the connector, and we're ready to get started. Right now we have got the power strip there into the left-hand side, powering the meter to tell us what our voltage is, what our frequency is. You can see we have a perfect sine wave. The battery system there is just about ready to hit 50%. Once it does hit 50%, generator will then shut down. I've got it set kind of low right now. You can adjust that to whatever you'd like. You can have it shut off as low as 50% or all the way up. Let's go ahead and throw a heavier load on this. Let's go ahead and turn on the outlets. Whoa, well, guess what? It's just when I did it, it actually shut off because it hit 50% and it shut off. Definitely want to make sure you have a mat on it because what's going to happen is it'll rotate sideways and then you're going to burn the side of your device and possibly melt it and blow it up. Don't let it set around by itself. Make sure that it's secured. Right now we have the power strip plugged into the Delta 3. As you can see, we're at about an 1800 watt load. And what that ends up causing with the X boost is the voltage will drop down to 105 volts, potentially even lower. So if you're doing it, it won't hurt a thing on something as simple as a resistive load, like a heater or a uh, skillet, something like that. It doesn't have any real sensitive electronics. It's not gonna hurt anything. But uh, the generator will do exactly the same thing if you uh, take it over its 1800 watt limit on LP gas, 2000 watt limit on gasoline. That's right, LP gas is not as powerful as what the gasoline is. You do lose 200 watts of power when you are running the LP versus gasoline. However, the LP is a lot cleaner burning, a lot more convenient. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't get moisture in it, things like that. So as you can see right now, like I said, it's running 1800 watts, no problem. Uh, but we are actually running both uh, heaters right now. So technically we are probably well over 1800 watts, but what it's doing is it's trying to keep it at 1800 watts. The true limit, if we was to bring the voltage up, would be much higher. Let's go ahead and unplug one heater and it will jump immediately up to 120 volts. And you can see that the actual output wattage is 1400 watts just by the one heater there on the left. That heater is doing 1400 watts. Let's switch the heater so we know what the one on the right is. So we got 1400 on the one. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Load increases, voltage drops, keeps it at 1800. Unplug the other one. And that heater right there is pulling 900 watts. So 14 plus 900 would be about 2,300 watts. We're drawing about what would normally be a 2,300 watt load, but we're able to lower that wattage down by dropping the voltage. So that's basically all X Boost is, is doing the numbers game by dropping the voltage and keep the wattage under. All right, now we just seen the generator kick on. It's getting ready to start charging because this just went down to 30%. Generator just, uh, Bluetooth came on. It's gonna start up. That's the first start attempt. Sometimes it uh, takes one or two tries. Here it goes again. Got it. Generator is going to speed up as it gets the load increased onto it. There, it likes it. So what we got going on here is we've got two heaters running over here, and you've got the actual battery all running. And it's able to handle it at 1800 watts, but like I said, it's doing it with 92 volts. 
Now we do have the generator set up that when it has a load of under 100 watts, which this is adjustable, you can put it at whatever wattage you want, you're able to have it shut off on its own. So we unplugged it, we brought it over to here. Like I said, we did do a little number to it there, so you definitely wanna be careful. Okay, we're at 31%, should be kicking on here in a second. That's what I had, as you can see, the little green light came on on the right hand side. It's pretty common for it to fail on the first try there. On this time here, it should start. There it goes. So if we wish to drop that down a little bit, now the output load is only 700 watts. That means we should be able to get a little bit more into the charging of the battery. It still is not coming up by much. Let's go ahead and kill the load. We'll go ahead and monitor voltage on the generator. We are still charging at 500 watts there on that battery. I think it's trying to protect the battery. Let's just go ahead and pull the plug on the actual power station. Let's plug it straight into the wall. Not sure why it's acting like this. Like I said, it might have got hot and damaged when uh, the muffler was right up against it. That would probably be a good idea to put a little bit better feet on it. The, uh, the feet feel kind of... They got ribs in it and stuff. I mean, but... Yeah, they probably need a little more grip on them. So let's go ahead and give her a while and see how she does. All right, here's a quick rundown of everything that we've seen at the last part there. So the power station was discharged and recharged very quickly, which causes heat. Heat causes things to go bad. So with EcoFlow's battery management system that's built in there, they monitor the temperature. You can actually see the battery temperature in the app. It was actually protecting itself and slowly putting the charge in at 500 watts. Once it cooled down, it went right back up to the thousand that I had it set at and everything worked fine. As you can see, the generator pretty much takes two tries to get it started, which is not too uncommon. It communicates back and forth with the power station with Bluetooth. And once that was all connected and everything's figured out, you're good to go. When these are provided, a lot of times these do not come with an owner's manual yet, that everything's still in the prototype mode. So a lot of times we don't have all the information and you gotta figure things out on your own as you're going. So here's what I'm gonna mention also, even though the equipment was provided to me to test and mine to keep, I'm not paid to actually do the review. So I am free to give my own opinion of things like mentioning that the feet on the bottom of the generator were a little slippery. Now my garage floor is really slick. It's kind of glass finish and that could happen. So they don't recommend you run the generator inside the garage anyhow, so it should really be outside. That's how you prevent getting carbon monoxide into your house. You really don't want it anywhere near it. Obviously, the generator has electronics in it. It needs to be shielded from rain. So, you know, that's where you're gonna have to build some sort of shed to keep the water off of it. Overall, what's my thoughts on it? I really like it a lot more as I played with it more and more. Uh, the 1800 watts of continuous power is really handy. The X-Boost has its drawbacks. I don't like the way it drops the voltage, but if you're in a situation where you have a large appliance and that's the only large appliance you have and you want to use it to get your cooking done or whatever, it's going to allow you to get that done. I don't really recommend using it uh, and overloading the generator to reach that goal unless you need to. The more you can run things at the right correct voltage, which is 110 to 120 volts, the better off you're going to be. Overall, I think it's a great little product. I think it's quiet. It actually does a good job. Uh, the battery life and stuff was pretty much on par when we gave it a quick drawdown versus letting it run all day. But like I mentioned, you know, it, it does have a 3% uh, battery discharge when the AC inverter's on, even when there's no load on it, uh, which isn't too uncommon when you have a smaller battery like this one has. This one only has 1,024 watt hours, whereas some of the other ones that I've been doing reviews on were 2,000 up to 6,000 watt hours. So they, they didn't show losing battery power as easily when it's a larger battery like that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.